You are listening to the Shopify Solutions Podcast, a podcast for Shopify store owners that brings you concrete examples on how to build and grow your e-commerce business. My name is Scott Austin, and I have an e-commerce agency named Jade Puma. In this podcast, I'll share my e-commerce insights and best practices with you. Hey, Scott Austin here. In this episode, I want to talk about some ways to make yourself more productive, and that is with your computer setup. In other words, this conversation will be about when you are in office mode and primarily working on a computer. The first aspect of this is your workspace. Now, setting up an optimal workspace is not always possible due to the constraints of our existing offices and homes. That said, let's talk first about having a workspace that allows you to focus. Most people think they are great multitaskers, but studies show that only 2.5% of people can effectively multitask. That means that 97.5% are not effective multitaskers. So if you think you are great at multitasking, you are probably wrong. Here's an article from the Cleveland Clinic that I'll link to in the show notes that sums it up nicely. Why multitasking doesn't work. Studies show it makes us less efficient and more prone to errors. Some days you feel like a master multitasker as you drink your morning coffee, catch up on email, and tune into a conference call. But did you know that for most people, in most situations, multitasking isn't actually possible? We're really wired to be monotaskers, meaning that our brains can only focus on one task at a time, says neuropsychologist Cynthia Kubo. When we think we're multitasking, most often we aren't really doing two things at once, but instead we're doing individual actions in rapid succession or task switching, she says. One study found that just 2.5% of people are able to multitask effectively. For the rest of us, our attempts to do multiple activities at once aren't actually that. Studies show that when our brain is constantly switching gears to bounce back and forth between tasks, especially when those tasks are complex and require our active attention, we become less efficient and more likely to make a mistake. This might not be as apparent or impactful when we're doing tasks that are simple and routine, like listening to music while walking, or folding laundry while watching TV. But when the stakes are higher and the tasks are more complex, trying to multitask can negatively impact our lives or even be dangerous. So-called multitasking divides our attention and makes it harder for us to give our full attention to one thing. For example, in studies, attempting to complete additional tasks during a driving simulation led to poor driving performance. Other studies suggest that people who frequently media multitask, like listening to music while checking email or scrolling through social media while watching a movie, are more distracted and less able to focus their attention, even when they're performing only one task. It can also affect our ability to learn, but in order to learn, we need to be able to focus. The more we multitask, the less we actually accomplish, because we slowly lose our ability to focus enough to learn, Dr. Kubu says. If we're constantly attempting to multitask, we don't practice tuning out the rest of the world to engage in deeper processing and learning. One study found that college students who tried to multitask took longer to do their homework and had lower average grades. Another pitfall is that trying to do too much at once makes it harder to be mindful and truly present in the moment. And mindfulness comes with a plethora of benefits for our minds and our bodies. Opting to focus on one task at a time can benefit many aspects of our life, including the workplace. So the point of my bringing up multitasking when talking about a workspace is that you want to create a workspace that is as distraction-free as possible. I have many clients that set up a home office away from their warehouse and business offices so they can focus on their work distraction-free. That way, store staff can't pop in to ask a quick question when the store owner is trying to focus on putting together a new marketing plan. On the opposite side of the spectrum, I have a client who frequently does video calls with me from the seating area of his cafe. Every conversation gets interrupted multiple times, which means we are less effective and things take much longer. Here's a real example from my office setup. I work in a remodeled garage in my backyard. I have two walls that are mostly glass with glass sliding doors. And my chihuahuas are in the office with me. And for the most part, the chihuahuas are distraction-free as they can sleep for most of the day. 
but my dogs go nuts when the crows visit my backyard, which the crows do a lot in the spring. Getting the crows to not visit seemed like an impossible task, so instead, I blocked the chihuahua's view to the backyard and the crows. As they are small dogs, I should to block the view through the glass for the bottom 18 inches. Now my dogs don't see when the crows visit, which makes my office quieter and lets me focus on my work. Another thing to think about when trying to reduce distractions is digital distractions. I turn off notifications on my computer, so I don't get a notification for every email that comes in. With email, you can set it up so that emails from certain senders do trigger a notification if you want. I also set my personal phone to no notifications. It doesn't ring if I get a call. It makes no noise or vibration when I get a text. And smartphones today allow you to set notification settings based on your location. That way the notifications can turn on and off automatically as you transition between spaces. Additionally, I've had clients who have asked me if I use Slack as they want a way to quickly get a response if they get stuck. And I don't use Slack. While I understand why my clients would want quick and easy access to my answers, I know that the interruptions, even if they are small, would have a noticeable drag on whatever project I was working on. While most people are not effective multitaskers, I think I'm an extreme example of it. In other words, I can't multitask at all. So I've learned that I can't even have music on in the background when I need to focus on work. Now, if you are like me, but you're in a shared environment, you may want to make sure that you are facing a wall so that you see less distractions and have on noise-canceling headphones with no music to reduce background noise. I went to college at the Coast Guard Academy where all the students live in one big dorm, and the person who was a valedictorian of my class would study while wearing industrial quality ear protection so that he could study as distraction-free as possible, which is probably one of the reasons he was at the top of our class. So let's shift to furniture. I find that I'm much more effective when I'm using traditional office furniture like a chair and desk. Some of that is because of my computer setup, which I'll talk about in a bit. But some of it is because it keeps me focused on the work I'm doing without encouraging me to fall asleep. In other words, working on a couch would never work for me. I may move to the couch if all I want to do is some research on YouTube. But other than that, I'm always in the traditional office setup. I'm not a small person. I'm six foot three, and the last time I was under 200 pounds, I wasn't old enough to drive. So I don't find traditional office chairs comfortable. They are just too small. A couple of years ago, I found a game changer for me, and that is the King Kong of office chairs. This thing is massive, and it makes me feel small. So that allows me more comfort as I can sit in different positions throughout the day. I was surprised how much more effective I became just by changing out my chair. Scott Austin here. I've gotten lots of feedback from listeners on how much they enjoy episodes where I and a Shopify store owner have a conversation about their business and Shopify store. If you are an owner of a Shopify store and would like to participate in a consult like those, I am currently taking applications. There is a link in the show notes where you can apply. Now let's shift from your workspace to your computer. Let me start by saying that for me, With the type of work that I'm doing, a laptop is not going to cut it. I need the power and the expandability of a desktop computer. Whenever I need a new computer because the old one's getting a bit slow, I get a higher-end Dell desktop. I don't buy the most expensive gaming computer, but the machine I get usually costs around $1,500, which is less than most MacBooks. The most important peripheral for your computer setup is your monitors. And notice that I'm saying the plural, monitors. And that's because I believe every office worker should have multiple monitors. It's amazing how much more effective you are with multiple monitors. This isn't to multitask, but to allow multiple pieces of information to be in front of you without having to switch windows for the one task you are focused on. That way, if you are sending an email response to a customer about their order, you can have your email on one screen and the Shopify admin with their order on the other screen. If you work on a laptop, you can add a second monitor to that also, depending on the ports available on your device. Now, I take this multiple monitor thing to an extreme. I have two 4K 50-inch televisions and a 4K 27-inch monitor all hooked up to my computer. 
And I set it up to have two windows side by side on the 50 inch televisions. So it's like having five screens at once. That allows me quick access to lots of information sources when I'm working on complex tasks. Here's a real example of how I use that setup daily when I'm editing a theme. One screen is my code editor. The second screen is the liquid cheat sheet that I use for reference. The third screen is Notion, my project management software, which tells me what my tasks are. The fourth screen is my browser preview of the work I'm doing. And the fifth screen is my browser preview of the work I'm doing on a mobile size screen. For my setup, running that many 4K screens takes a lot of computing power and ports. That's one reason I use a desktop. A laptop could never power the screens. I also had to upgrade to a powerful video card that is built for this, as the video cards that came with the computer were insufficient. I could tell they were underpowered as the monitors would flash and reset occasionally. So I spent $700 on a more powerful graphics card, and it's paid for itself as my screens don't flash and distract me anymore. I originally went with the 15-inch TVs as they are fairly inexpensive. These days, the 4K ones are under $500. But TVs do not have the same quality as monitors, especially when it comes to color. The color is just off on the TVs. Good quality 4K 32-inch monitors cost around $800 each. So right now, I'm debating the cost of upgrading my current monitor setup to four 32-inch monitors. I'll probably pull the trigger this year if I can find a good deal during the upcoming Black Friday sales. Continuing on with peripherals, let's talk about keyboards. As I have a desktop computer, I need a separate keyboard. But even if I had a laptop, I would want a separate keyboard. And that's because a laptop's keyboard is smaller and doesn't have as many keys. Also, with a separate keyboard, you have better control over the position and angle of the keyboard. I'm not a fan of batteries, so I use a USB keyboard that plugs into my desktop. The keyboard I use is a mechanical keyboard. Many keyboards today are not. Mechanical keyboards have individual switches for each key. Typing on them provides more tactile feedback, which makes for more efficient typing. The keyboard also has a metal case, which means it's more durable. I know my keyboard is going to last me through multiple computers. The last peripherals I want to talk about are newer ones for most of us since COVID, but I believe they're going to be permanent ones now. And those are the devices you need for online meetings. At a minimum, you're going to need a video camera and a microphone. If you're on a laptop, there are built-in ones. On a desktop, you're going to need to buy them separately. For video, I use Logitech 4K cameras that sit on top of my monitor. They cost around $200. They come with microphones, but built-in microphones are not the best quality. I have separate microphones from my video cameras. If you get a dedicated microphone, you'll want to buy a directional microphone. Directional microphones pick up more sound from the direction that the microphone is pointed, which should be towards you. So they pick up less background noise from the rest of the room. I have one microphone on a boom arm, which allows me to bring it in when I need it and swing it away when I don't. And on the computer with the 50 inch TVs, the TVs are too tall for a boom arm. So I have a heavy tabletop stand for that one. A good directional mic will cost you around $80 with great ones being hundreds of dollars. I also keep a variety of different devices around for testing purposes. I need to test on different operating systems, browsers, screen sizes, and input devices to ensure a quality online store experience. For testing, my current set of devices are a Windows PC, a Mac mini, an Android phone, an iPhone, an iPad, and a Chromebook. And the final thing that I think about when it comes to my hardware is redundancy. If my computer is down, my agency is dead in the water. For that reason, I have two complete PC desktops in my office. That way, if anything goes down or breaks, I have a backup. Before I had two computers, it seemed like a second one would be a gratuitous expense. But when my computer went and it took a few days to get a replacement, I realized not having a backup was more expensive. And because I have two different systems, I optimize them for different purposes. One is my daily work machine and the other is optimized for podcast recording. But I can do my full job on either one. Now, as a Shopify agency, my office and computer setup is more important to my business than it is for a Shopify store owner, 
as your time is not always on a computer and working solo. That said, I do know that slight improvements in your setup can have a noticeable impact on your productivity. Here are the big takeaways I want from this episode. One, distractions mean a loss of productivity. Two, your office setup matters. Three, rational investments in computer hardware are worthwhile investments for your business. Four, everyone will benefit from multiple monitors. Five, think about backup hardware. That's it for this episode. Thanks for listening. You've been listening to the Shopify Solutions Podcast with Scott Austin. This podcast is brought to you by Jade Puma, a Shopify-focused agency located in San Diego, California. If you like what you heard, please leave a review and subscribe on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast.